Well, it's talking to your guys after the game, they all said the same thing, that there's been a lot of conversations about stopping the run, but now it's time for action. What else needs to be said to spark that action? Um, I don't know if words, well, when you get to this point, if words fixes that, you know, the, the coaching points, obviously, continue to coach better, um, play better, all those things, but it's, it's action. You know, that, that's what has to happen right now. Um, so you get to the point where the words get to become hollow. You got to see things get followed through and guys get that job done. Uh, coach, again, coaches and players. Um, so that's, that's what it comes down to. Eventually, you get tired of hearing the words and the action has to be put forth to get that done. That's what football is. This game, as long as this game is played, it's going to be about meeting and defeating blocks and whipping a guy's ass. That's what this game is always going to be about, period, point blank, whether you're talking about defending the run or rushing the passer. So um, it's a mano a mano game. You know, sometimes certain guys will have to do a little heavy lifting and handle some double teams to buy time for other guys to scrape over the top and things of that nature. Um, but that's that's what football is. It is. That's, that's, that's what it is. When you play the run game, it's a, it's a six-second fist fight. You're duking it out, and you got to continue to battle, understand where your responsibilities are within a gap um, or a stun or whatever that you have to go and cancel out. And also, there's a level of unselfishness that comes in with it, too, um, You know, to make sure that you understand what your responsibility is, do it so you understand how it's helping the guy that's playing either adjacent to you or behind you to get your job done. Um, so you know, obviously, it's, it's all of those things. Do you think it's more of a physical thing or a mental thing? Um, you know, it could be a little bit of both. The idea of being more physical, how hard is that to do, to flip that switch when you're in mid-December and on a short week like this? You know, my thing is, I wouldn't, I would say the guys have shown to be able to do that in spurts, but it's the consistency. And then when you show that if people keep hammering it at you, eventually that, you know, they're, you're going to find a leak is that's what happens. When you shut the water off early, it's like anything. You know, everybody in this league is a copycat league. So you want to put a fire out early, you know. So now that you've shown it, you're going to have to show for a couple of games that you fix the issue so that way it doesn't keep compounding itself and keep happening over and over again. So, um, but I would be concerned if they had not shown that. We've shown that in, in a streak of games where we've been able to shut down the run. It's the consistency of doing the right things play after play that is the most frustrating that's hurting us right now. Um, I had to adapt. You know, you adapt things to obviously your personnel and what the things that they do well, where they're most comfortable. Um, definitely don't have the <laughs> full onslaught of what we can definitely do. We have to, the things that the guys can handle is what we have available, you know, is what will put them in position to go and be successful. Um, so did that answer that, that answer your question? Did that, did you learn that? When did you learn that? What part of the season did you say, well, maybe we couldn't do exactly what we wanted? Uh, a lot of it, you just you constantly adjust and adapt throughout the course of the season. You know, you understand the things that guys are handling well. Uh, sometimes it could be a particular you know, opponents can present different challenges and things that you have to adjust and adapt to. Um, that maybe it, you may know schematically it might be the best thing to do, but again, you have to do what's best for the player. You know, or the group of players. Uh, that was a crusher. Obviously, uh, losing Shelby before the game and obviously losing Al. Uh, in the midst of it was a was a gut punch. You know, it was two of our uh, best interior run defenders, so uh, that definitely didn't make the job any easier. But there's no excuses. It's next man up, and you know everybody gets paid for a reason. Is there anything different in terms of the winning game with McCaffrey than when you guys saw him in week two at all? I mean, just another really dangerous, experienced uh, runner, talented runner. Um, but between he and Debo, and they always all their backs have been really successful. But obviously, Christian's a, a special player, and uh, the scheme in itself presents a lot of problems. Uh, control the C gap. You know, that's what he was able to do for us and uh, help our edges. Um, that's the things that he provides to us. We've done that with him in the past as well. And a lot of it just we can do that based on situations on what kind of uh, team that we're seeing. That would have been obviously ideal for the opponent we see this week. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of hurt us obviously. Um, I would say that in certain aspects. 
Um, again, they've continued to make strides, but they obviously have their part in, in things too that they got to get better at. You know, it's a collective thing. You know, coaches and players are never going to point the finger at them. It's all of us in this thing together to get it to get it right. So, but they've done some things well, um, and just continue to make the steps in the right direction. We haven't seen Boyan can maybe play as much the last couple of weeks as he had. Is that just kind of a game plan thing? No, I, you know, sometimes within the flow of the game, and I have a conversation with Coach Curry during the flow of the game. Sometimes you can lose sense of uh, the substitutions, but that can't happen with that guy. He's too uh, young and talented player with a bright future in front of him. We got to get him out there more. Where do you feel like Tariq is at? Uh, he understands all of his fits. You know, he's just, you know, they got to come up and be a sure tackler. You know, that part of his game uh, is still coming along. And obviously he takes pride in that, so that'll get fixed when he gets that part of it, you know, done. And he, he tackles, he's a willing tackler, just has to continue to make those, you know, steps in the right direction there. Um, once he gets that part mastered, the kid has everything in the world in front of him. What is Ryan showing you in the right game with that all he's banged up with? Man, you know, right now I appreciate and a lot of guys. You know, get this late in the season, everybody's playing through nicks and bangs and their injuries and whatnot. Um, he uh, he's playing physical, he's playing hard, um, good awareness in his run fits. Uh, there's a couple he would like to have back in that game, uh, but overall, you know, just uh, his passion, energy, his physicality um, in there is uh, is definitely you recognize that and you can feel him when he's out there. Back to Martin Brooks, how much is their interchangeability maybe a challenge for them having to? Dual roll it and make five to play. Um, I think this, you know, anytime you're dealing with a guy that is, you know, this is year four for Cody, but it's his first year playing uh, considerable time, uh, obviously. So a lot of things he's experiencing almost like he's a rookie, even though he's not, he's far removed from it, but he's been majority a special teams player throughout his career. So there's going to be a learning curve, um, obviously, as he continues to play. That's why I've said he's made strides throughout the course of the season. You know, you just want those things to happen faster because we're in the midst of it. and. And uh, you don't want to fall, you know, fall far behind. But there's not a lot of film of, of Brock Purdy. But what are your impressions from what you've seen in these two? You see a confident, a confident kid. You know, that's out there playing and having fun. He doesn't look jittery or nervous at all. Uh, has really great command of what they do. He can do all the things that Kyle's looking for. The guy, you know, the quarterback position to be able to boot, get on the edges, play, the, handle the play action passes and whatnot. Uh, so uh, just an extremely confident kid uh, in himself. Uh, not afraid to make some throws. There's probably some throws that I'm sure Kyle probably was a little ticked off that he tried. But uh, that's the first thing that impressed me with a young kid. You can see when uh, the stage isn't too big for him. So that, that part was impressive about him. Well, Gino's not on your side of the ball, but you uh, he, he watched him obviously you know, over years in practice. What were you seeing now from what you guys, what you saw from him when against your defense in practice? Uh, from Gino? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, con the consistent just progress. Gino's always been really smart. Knowing Geno since high school, he could, he's always had unbelievable arm talent and being able to spin the ball. Uh, but seeing his maturity throughout the years, uh, his growth, and obviously seeing our defense and the variations of coverages and things like that and him being able to process it. And he would come up and talk to Sean and myself about you know the things that we were doing and what he should look like, look at pre-snap and whatnot. He just, he's been completely dedicated to the game. So it's been impressive to see. Do you understand the Teddy recruiter? Uh, yeah, I, him and Teddy Bridgewater and Jacoby Brissett all in within a two-year span. Anything else? Thanks. Uh, thank you. You guys take care.